All right, thank I want to thank the uh, organizers for the invitation. Uh, those in the room who know me know that I'm uh, very passionate about this issue of uh, uh, genomic medicine and precision medicine, and in particular, the promise of, of uh, precision medicine in, in uh, diverse and, and underserved populations. And so I see uh, this IGNITE program as, a, as an opportunity for, um, uh, for some, some serious sort of uh, engagement and, um, and, and, and work that, that could facilitate and, um, and bring to, uh, to bear the promise of, of uh, precision medicine. So we are, we are all familiar with this, uh, with this curve as it relates to um, the disease process. And, and with these genomic tools, we are trying to intervene earlier in this process. Of course, there's uh, obviously been some barriers, be, the, be it reimbursement or, or actual um, uh, knowledge, scientific knowledge, uh, uh, research, and, uh, and, and access issues. But uh, as you guys are, are well aware, um, the, the implementation has started. And so we, we, we're in this era now of, uh, of precision medicine. And I think one of the, probably one of the more successful is, has been in the cardiovascular sort of and cancer um, realm uh, with these uh, genetic tests uh, being um, uh, quite informative and actionable, right? But as many of us know, precision medicine may uh, actually increase uh, health disparities. And there are many reasons for that. Uh, Obviously, one of the, the most important ones is that uh, still today, the bulk of the information uh, that's used is, is based on populations of European ancestry. And so when we, we talk about implementation, uh, we, we sort of wonder uh, at times uh, what the, uh, if those benefits uh, are, are equitable across all populations. Um, and I like to show this, uh, <laughs> this, this cartoon. This is a sort of a take-home point. Now, I just wanted to just focus on a couple of points. I really wanted us to have a really good discussion, so I'm not going to be long or belabor this point because uh, you know most of you know uh, where where I'm coming from. Uh, when we look, when we think about the gaps, um, and this is something that really has started to concern me and others. In particular, um, we talk about precision oncology. We talk about these. Uh, be, be it from for BRCA or uh, uh, t BRCA testing or even sequencing of tumors. And we come up with these variants of unknown significance in populations like uh, Hispanic or, or African American populations. Uh, what do we do with that information? Um, and so there are many now trying to, to see if we can start sharing these databases across institutions. Now that I'm at the University of Arizona, I see sort of the um, the impact of these, of these variants of unknown significance uh, in these genetic tests that we're doing uh, in, in the cancer center, uh, the bulk of our patient population being of Mexican heritage. And so the bulk of their gene pool uh, coming from uh, Native American populations. And we know, if we look through the literature, very, very little bits of uh, information on these variants. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, uh, just this past uh, couple of weeks, there was a lot of discussion on the misclassification of pathogenic variants and ina inadequate patient samples and the lack of diversity in these, in these trials, which then go to um, implementation. And then, of course, one way I think that we can actually start appreciating and leveraging uh, these diverse populations in, the, in this work is by, is by leveraging genetic ancestry because it'll allow us to focus in on, on potential actionable uh, 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 markers. I'll give you some examples shortly. But there, there have been many uh, throughout the literature, many examples of uh, insights from studies conducted in diverse uh, 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 racial ethnic groups. And I think even within um, um, IGNITE, there are uh, some examples of these, um, of these studies. When we, we think about sort of the impact of, of, of uh, genomic medicine on, on, uh, on disease and health, uh, especially we, when we are trying to focus in on disparities, we have this social component and this, this genetic component that might actually interact. And so uh, one way in which we 
determine the role of, of genetics in that is by trying to understand genetic ancestry uh, as a proxy for genetic background as opposed to self-reported race. Um, I, I like to give this example. This is a study that we did where there was a clinical trial looking at naltrexone. And you know naltrexone uh, has been used uh, for uh, um, uh, alcohol dependency and, and smoking cessation. Um, uh, but there are some big differences in terms of response between those who self-report as white and those that self-report as African-American. Uh, what we did in this study was we went in and looked at the African-American samples and saw that the response or the quit rates uh, for the mixed group of African-Americans really wasn't different between uh, the, um, the uh, individuals with naltrexone versus placebo. But when we stratified the African-American population based on West African genetic ancestry, we saw the effect among those African-Americans that had lower West African genetic ancestry, similar to what we saw in those that self-reported as European, uh, those that had higher West African ancestry, we didn't see an effect there. And so, that made us really want to go in then and focus in on what was this information uh, a proxy for. And in fact, it was some variants in the mu opioid receptor that varied significantly between these uh, uh, West African and European populations uh, that actually uh, are potentially functional, uh, um, uh, impactful in terms of response, naltrexone response. So, so this is a situation where um, looking at ancestry allowed us to dig deeper. Uh, we didn't stop there, of course. We shouldn't stop at self-reported race. Uh, we shouldn't stop at genetic ancestry. This is, we're, we're trying to take this at the individual level, but this is one way to get there um, and, and, um, and leverage uh, diverse populations. Uh, since my work on, uh, is focused mainly in cancer, cancer genetics, I find it interesting when we look at this, sort of the, the impact of rare variants in, in cancer. Uh, this was a, a study where they actually did resequencing in many of the GWAS hits found across multiple um, GWAS studies. And, and uh, of course, not surprising, the number of rare variants found in African descent populations significantly higher than the other uh, worldwide populations. But what's even more surprising is, is that the, uh, the heritability attributable to those rare variants uh, being much more higher in the African descent population. So this is something that actually could be um, uh, something that needs to be understood and leveraged. And, and hopefully, uh, programs like Ignite could, could, uh, could, could explore that. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, this issue of, of genetic mis misdiagnosis and, and its potential impact in health disparities. Uh, when we um, look through the literature and look through the databases, we find that, yes, there are studies where there are a couple of African Americans or Hispanic uh, patients in these studies. But the, uh, the, the, the numbers of patients and controls are very limited. And that has led to, in many cases, misclassification of some of these potential uh, actionable um, uh, variants. Uh, and so uh, there is a need, obviously, to really go back and say, well, are we doing uh, these populations a misservice, a disservice? Um, and actually, you know, is it ethically? right for um, insurance companies to pay for some of these tests when, in fact, the information getting back, given back to some of these populations is very limited. I mean, that's, that's something that I, I, uh, I, I wonder at times. So anyway, um, uh, I'm going to end here. Uh, as I said, attention must be paid to increasing diversity in, in genomic medicine implementation. Um, and of course, uh, folks here in Ignite could help identify these barriers and develop more aggressive strategies. If anybody is, is, is sort of in the, um, uh, 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 in the, um, the foxhole, let's say, uh, that, that could be impactful as it relates to genomic medicine and having an impact in disparities, it is uh, this, uh, folks like this um, who are in programs like Ignite uh, who have uh, um, started this gen genomic medicine implementation. And uh, I always end with this issue of equitable benefits, um, depending, overcoming barriers of uh, education, accessibility, regulation, and reimbursement, obviously. The biggest thing, and I was happy to hear about this, this workshop where the payers were, were engaged, because um, you know, there has to be this back and forth dialogue as, as things move forward um, uh, uh, in, in order for, to, to really get broad uh, implementation. But most importantly, obviously, uh, diversity in uh, the genetic studies. Thank you.
Thank you, Rick. Next, we have Carol Horowitz from Mount Sinai. 